Hey guys, we are back with part two on National Vocation Awareness Week. So let's get going with the second video. I'm Val Hernandez and this is the Mercy Vlog. set of questions let's see what is a married life what is a married life um, well it's a life that we experience as a married couple <laughs> <laughs> well yeah it's is that uh, life as a as a partner, as having a partnership, and you know, sharing not just common areas and and um, like things together, and mm -hmm. it's it's sharing everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, it's knowing that God comes first, but you know, my husband comes second. Um, it's staying together and being together till death do us part. Um, no matter what, even when we don't disagree, even when we disagree, um, even when we're probably not the fondest of each other, it's knowing that we're gonna stay no matter what. Mm -hmm. right, second question: What is marriage? Oh, is marriage a calling from God? It is. It, it really is. Um, just like we can be called um, to the religious life or be called uh, to a priest, to become a priest, um, marriage is really a calling from God. Uh, honestly, like I said at first, I was I felt like I was discerning for the uh, to be a consecrated virgin, which is a single life. Um, and God said, no, that's, that's not for you as much as you think that is for you. Um, I have other plans for you. And he started telling me that I really do want to have kids and I want to form a family. Um, so it really was a calling because I tried to deny it at first, <laughs> especially with Francisco. I tried to deny that. Uh, but God said, I have other plans. And it's just answering that call and not being scared to answer it. Yeah. Well, some, some people um, have... Um have that defined uh, calling and, or they they know for sure like where they want to go but for most people you have to discern you have to pray about it you have to learn about the different vocations and prepare for it so that's that's how you know. How do you prepare your vocation in life? Oh, there you go. Next question. Prepare. <laughs> uh, so, so if you if you're gonna get married, you take your marriage preparation classes. If you're gonna stay single, you also wanna live a holy life, like not not uh, be uh, not doing things that you shouldn't be doing. Mm -hmm. And um, also for like for religious life, also they go through extensive, I would say training, but like preparation. preparation, like also mm -hmm. like school, school. There's retreats, and retreats that you can go to. Yeah, and for priesthood, of course, they, they go through a, a long process. Uh, process a very of, long process. Yeah, very long process. <laughs> So um, it's to prepare, you have to learn about it. You have to study and um, also put into action like what you're, what you're, what you learn, like your faith, like faith without action is, is nothing. So you have to put it into practice. Mm -hmm. Like Francesco said, um, especially with the vocation and marriage, it's, it's a personal discernment and then it's a discernment with your significant other, which is Francisco. Um, 
like he said, we took our marriage prep classes, uh, but we also took therapy. Um, we took counseling together, uh, just because you know there's always there's always going to be that doubt um, telling you that you're not ready. Um, but you know, counseling I, I feel like for us has helped us a lot, um, and those marriage prep classes. Those were, those were awesome. <laughs> yeah, because we, we all carry a baggage. And if you need it, we, we recommend. Like, we vouch for counseling. Like, we use um, Rejoice Counseling, which is a Catholic program of uh, counseling. Mm -hmm. And they do, they serve single individuals, couples, uh, any, mm -hmm. any, anyone really that, that wants to. Next question. How is marriage a covenant? So the covenant. Mm. So just like uh, God entered into different covenants with uh, His people, our, like us with His people, um, we enter into a covenant mm. with each other whenever we get married. So it's a covenant is a, an enduring promise. So it's a long life. Uh, promise is more than just a contract. Um, it's it's our. I mean our. How do you call it? It's a promise that can't be broken. <laughs> yes, it's a yeah. It's our bonding promise. There you go. So yeah. It's a promise that I will be with you till death do us apart. <laughs> yeah, no <problem. laughs> Next question. What is the virtue of chastity? Oh, I take this one a lot. Um, chastity, honestly, is something very beautiful. Uh, as mentioned, uh, I did save myself for marriage. Um, not for me. The virtue of chastity is knowing that chastity isn't for just me as a person and me as my body. It's, it's knowing and understanding that my body is a temple. Uh, my body is not mine. It's, it's God's and um, doing his will with your body. So God asked for us to you know, um, wait till marriage to lose our virginities. Um, but chastity isn't just before marriage. Chastity also Absolutely. comes as a marriage. Um, what does God from, want from us as a married couple? He wants us uh, to procreate, to have kids. And it's us understanding that, okay, um, if some of you don't know, there's this beautiful course called Natural Family Planning. Um, so knowing that there's a natural way of planning your, your family um, and knowing that there's certain things of uh, knowing when it is that you can have um, a baby or there's those certain times where, okay, you can't, um, and kind of working with one another. Um, so chastity is knowing that your body is a temple, your body is for God, and everything that you do um, is for God. So knowing that it's also not just before marriage, uh, but it's also after marriage. But once you get married, it's not just your own, it's your spouse's as well. Yeah, it's part of um, following the woman, the woman's cycle. So it's, it's when chastity comes into play. So mm -hmm. not, be, not because you're married, that means you're gonna procreate all the time or like you know do <laughs> come together come as together, man as wife <laughs> yeah come together into that intimate embrace like mm -hmm. all the time or or at just certain times so it's it's being chased when you need when you need to be mm -hmm. and it's a form of respecting each other's body just like i respect my own body i respect his as well Why do people marry? <laughs> I feel like that's one of the most common questions when it comes to marriage. Um, honestly, because of love, it, it's it's a it's the greatest form of love as well as is knowing that you know I promise to be true to you and only you for the rest of my life. Um, and when we get mad at each other. Um, I'm not walking out. I'm not going to step out and leave you. It's saying, man, I'm going to stay here, you know, and put my pride down and, and stay here and work things with you. Uh, but also remember that with marriage, it's, it's three people. It's not just one or two. 
it's it's you, your spouse, and God. Um, so you're marrying um, to be that holy union, to be you yourself. Sorry, you, um, God, and your spouse. Yeah, it's having God in the, at the center of your marriage. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, but there, there's different reasons uh, why people get married. And I would say there's well, there, there might be, but. I mean, I'm not, not one to judge. Like, some people say you're married for the wrong reasons or, you know, you're married for the right reasons. But um, I would say the right reason is that, like, to to love. Um, mm -hmm. And we might be blinded for that feeling of being, or feeling in love, or being in love. But the way, like, you got to look out for for the signs that that is true love, it's it's a it's an honest love, mm -hmm. and I mean keep keep each other honest and in your decisions. Mm -hmm. Honestly, keeping each other accountable. Yeah. yeah, like I mean, let's be honest. Marriage isn't easy, and there's times you know that you might lose his temper. There's times that I might lose my temper, and it's saying, hey, like. We know better, you know? We know that that's not what God wants from us. God wants us to love. And the other one putting down their pride and saying, you know what, you're right. You're totally right. So it's holding each other accountable. Mm -hmm. All right, that's all the questions. All right, thank you. <laughs> thank you for having us here. Um, this has been a really awesome experience for me. And for me too, yeah. And uh, just some advice there, uh, like Francisco and I were mentioning, um, vocations is such a beautiful thing. Um, there's four different kinds. Um, just truly take the time to discern which one is for you. Um, don't feel rushed. I feel like personally, um, don't let other people decide your vocation. Um, that vocation, that discernment is between you and God alone. Don't let anyone else affect that. Um, sure, counseling is great. We recommend counseling. Um, we love family, we love friends. Um, but know that each person has their own journey and that journey to love, journey to Christ. So keep that, that vocation, that discernment between you and Him only. Yes, so the, the more you learn about God, the more you learn about yourself, and the better prepared you are for discerning your vocation. Thank you. <laughs> I hope this video has helped you understand a little bit more about vocation. Let us know in the description down below what topics you would like to discuss next. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and share the video with your family and friends. Remember, God is love and rich in mercy. God bless.